New tool announcement from Harbor Freight, the Maddox 22 piece back probe kit. I was alerted in an email that this thing was coming out. And as soon as I got the word that it was available, I rushed right out to Harbor Freight to grab one. Not because I like these, but because I feel it was important to make a bit of a public safety announcement, a PSA, if you will, about the back probe process. Some people get kits like this, and the next thing you know, you have issues with your wiring, holes punched in the insulation. Improper use of these can cause a lot of damage. I made a kind of silly video. I'll link to it right here poking fun at the back probes and how not to use them but you know what they do have a reason they are important in certain situations so i thought i'd make a quick video showing you the proper way to use a back probe when doing electrical diagnostics link to the cricket review right here Harbor Freight isn't really known for their electrical diagnostic equipment. This is a $6 digital multimeter. I'll be making a video in the future about this thing and why you might want to steer clear from it. It's cheap, it's enticing, but honestly I think any other choice out there is better than this. So I'm always a little hesitant to go through the electrical aisle because I never know what I'm going to see in there. Yeah, I don't know, let's just get into it. Alright, so you've got some Banana leads here with alligator clips on the end of them. Two extensions for multimeter looks like. And then you have your back probe needles. This thing slides out, which is kind of handy. You can actually put it up in the stand like so. Keep them stationary. So what's the deal with back probes? Get a power supply, some connectors. We need a light. We're going to pretend that this is a connector you'd find on a car or this one. Very common connectors. This is a Deutsch style. This is a weather pack. Link on how to build these weather pack connectors and Deutsch connectors right there. So let's build us a little circuit. We have the load. We have the connector. I'm just going to be building this pretty crudely. We're just doing this for a demo. I don't want to solder this thing up. So the black one I'm going to wire up to the negative side. Here we go. We have the load, the connector, and power and ground wires. Let's see if it works. Perfect. So what's the point? We have a load here. We have a connector, no switch. I'm just using the power supply for the switch. What these back probes are made for is so you can get a live voltage reading on a circuit without having to disconnect anything. So each one of these back probes has a very sharp needle on it. Let me get a ground jumper here so I have a constant ground. So I have my needle hooked up to the meter. I've got ground going to the battery negative. If I'm on volts, turn the circuit on. We can see that I'm getting about 14 volts, 13.8. So how would I get a live reading in here? Well, if I find the positive, what we see a lot of times is people will just stab their needle right into the wire. I have pierced the insulation at this point, which means if I don't take precaution to cover that little pinhole up, it's gonna get corrosion in it. If you're very aggressive with your needle, sometimes you can actually break wire strands. Why not just disconnect the load and check for power in the connector? You might have additional resistance in your circuit. I'm gonna wire in the coil side of this relay to my circuit to add resistance. Again, this is all temporary. If you wanna blast me in the comments for not knowing how to wire stuff up, go right ahead. Put a little bit of tape on it just to prevent anything from shorting out. It's getting a little bit cluttered here. Hopefully you can stay with us. We still have the power side of the circuit coming out from the battery, but this time it's going through a coil, so added resistance back through, so it's in line, it's in series. It's gonna go through the circuit, it's gonna come back out, and then we're gonna go back to ground. This black wire, it's just my ground for the meter. Let's turn the circuit on and see what happens. So if you're working with LEDs, you have a lot of wiggle room when it comes to added resistance in your circuit. A lot of times they'll still work just fine. Incandescent bulbs, on the other hand, usually responds poorly to any sort of added resistance in here, but the idea is still the same. So let's say, oh, the LED is dim or my incandescent bulb is dim. Now we have two series loads. So if I back probe the circuit, see what we have here? So I've dropped a little more than six volts at this particular point. So I have a voltage drop across the relay and then whatever's left over, in this case 7.6, that's what's driving 
the load. So like I said, on a relay, it's really not that big of a deal, but an incandescent light would definitely respond to almost half volts. So that's where the idea of using a back probe came from. This is so you could see where your actual voltage drop is. In this case, we know we have a voltage drop before this connector. If I traced it all the way back, I could keep on going until I found the right wire. In this case, it'll be the black wire. Let me just stab it incorrectly to show you. 13.8 before the first resistor, 7.5 before the second resistor. So that's your voltage drop that you're reading right here. Now, like I said, I've been using this incorrectly. incorrectly. The real way that you wanna use back probes is you wanna take a look at the connector body. See those two orange insulators right there? Those are to protect the pins so water can't get down into that connector body. Now the way you actually want to use back probes is you want to snake them between the insulator and the wire. You don't want to pierce it, don't go out here. You want to go between it and just kind of feed it in until you get contact with something metal and you can get your reading. When you get done using a back probe, you should be able to slide it out and not see any sort of damage on the insulators or the wires. Deutsch connectors are done in the exact same process. Snake the needle between the insulator and the wire insulation until you get contact. Don't stab the insulation on a wire, that's bad. You know, at the beginning, is it really gonna be that big of a deal? No. Is it gonna cause issues within a month? Probably not. This is one of those time things, you know? You've got a hole in your wire, which means eventually moisture can get in there. Corrosion can get in there. So you can do troubleshooting, you can figure out your problem, but then you're left with another problem. Why is taking a voltage drop a necessity? If this light were dim, pop the connector off, use my meter just on a connector, I'm gonna get source voltage on it. Why is that? Well, without a path to ground, I'm gonna get source voltage that comes out, goes through the load, comes right back out. It's right here. Nothing's using it. 13.9's coming out, 13.9's coming out. It's when I give it a path to ground that this guy will actually start to eat the voltage. Is there any other way to test this without back probes? Yes, with this. This is a load pro. This tool is designed to take voltage drop readings, tell you if you have an issue in a circuit without piercing the wire. And I'll link a more detailed video here so you can see real world applications of using this thing. Load Pro will tell you if you have high resistance in your circuit and you don't need to resort to stabbing anything with a needle like this. The temptation is just too great. Since they give you a nice sharp stick and lots of soft stuff you can stab, a lot of people go crazy with these. I understand not everyone is the same. A lot of people know this already, but I'm just making sure that the information is out there for everyone. Don't stab your insulin and there's also better methods of testing for unintended resistance in a circuit. You might be asking yourself, with a load pro, I would never need these, so I should just invest in one of this, pay the $50 for this thing, and I can use my multimeter instead of $15 for a back probe kit, and this is all I need. I wish that were the case, but it's not always true. Let's say you have a connector, you disconnect it, everything looks okay. You get voltage, hit the button, no voltage drop, hit the button, no voltage drop, plug it in, and still your load is dim. This is where you would absolutely need to use a back probe kit, because sometimes your pins inside these connectors don't make a full connection. Anyone ever seen someone just stab their multimeter down into a connector? You're not supposed to do that. So you have good voltage over here, you have good path to ground over here, but when you stick them together, they don't actually meet. This isn't gonna help you with that unless you can get a connector further down the road to test. Sometimes that's not always the case. Build-wise, this is a pretty good kit. The back probes, even though I'm uh, hesitant about them, those are made really well. It comes with two banana leads for your multimeter and then five leads with banana style plugs on one side, alligators on the other. So for $15, it's not a bad deal. You do get some pretty handy items in here. Will you use it every day? Probably not, but it's definitely good in certain situations. Of course, you don't need my permission to use a back probe kit, but if you're going to use back probes, make sure you do it properly, or else the technician later on down the road is gonna have a different problem to try to figure out. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching.